Hi guys, this is Nadia Hilker. I'm playing Magna on The Walking Dead, and you guys are listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast, and I'm sending you all my love. Bye! Hello, my name is Cassie McClincy. I play Lydia on The Walking Dead, and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Yeah! Hey there guys, I'm Callan McAuliffe and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, I'm Lindsley Register and I play Lara on The Walking Dead. You're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, this is Ross Marquand and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Awesome. <laughs> Survivors, welcome to episode 144 of The Walking Dead Talk Through, or should I say Tales of The Walking Dead Talk Through. I'm Kyle. I'm Brian. And hopefully LT will be able to join us later. Um, he had something that he had to take care of while we were trying to start recording, so hopefully we'll get to hear his voice soon. Before we begin, just wanted to you know let you all know about the Patreon. You know, It's definitely a great way to help uh, support our podcast, um, but also the Patreons do get the uh, version of the episode. Uh, basically, they get the episode early, and um, it's basically just a copy of like what we record tonight. So, definitely, sometimes it takes me a little bit longer to edit. So, <laughs> not that that's this is like a reason why you should have to go to Patreon, but just saying that's like that's one of the mini perks that we have over there, and we always like to, you know. Like if you liked what we do and enjoy the podcast, supporting us would definitely be appreciated. And you can join for as just about as little a dollar as a month. And uh you can find that over at patreon.com slash walking dead talk through. All right. Well we didn't have any ep- or feedback from last week's episode D. So let's get into this week's episode, season one, episode four, titled Amy slash Dr. Everett. Uh written by Amon or was that Mamandu Garba and directed by Haifa Al Mansour? I think he actually got that right. <laughs> I, 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 now I don't I don't know about the written by um, uh, Ama Amadu maybe Amadu yeah Garba something like that. I think or yeah. yeah. Well, hey, I'm sure I got it much closer than most of the other times <laughs> with normal names. <laughs> I'm surprised you got the direct you got the director pretty much right, I think. Yeah. Um, so well, yay for me. Yeah. All right. Well, the description on AMC Plus for this episode was Amy tries to convince Dr. Everett that people need to take back the land from the dead. Oh, all right. Well, that's an interesting description compared to what we saw. Uh, all right. Well, let's get into our ratings. Um, I actually did not really enjoy this episode all that much. I don't know if there was part of me just like kind of was like I, I wasn't able to really like pay attention and focus, and then there was a bad mood. But then even when I did my rewatch, I was kind of like ah, I don't know. I just didn't really enjoy it all much. So I just gave it a five. Lots of falling down. Nightshade specimens twenty one. <laughs> um, for me. Um, I like the science aspect of it. Mm. Um, that's always whenever we, we get that in the walking dead universe, I, you know, am very keen to, to watch those things, um, where it faltered was, I, I don't, I don't feel like it did a great job, um, establishing the relationship between the two characters um Mm -hmm. you know made me really want to care for either of them so um so i give it an eight based on the the science aspects of it and one other thing that i'll talk about in my um awesome sauce and i'll just say um eight 40 foot trenches <laughs> to yeah. keep the walkers out i don't know yeah <laughs> Another or should, should we or or maybe i should call them keep the chompers out there we yeah. go 
<laughs> yep. The chompers. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I kind of, well, anyways, I'll get into it because I think I had some similar reasons. I just, I, I did drop the rating a lot just because I felt like I'm like, I didn't really necessarily need to even like see this episode. Like it just left me hanging with more. And I was like, I don't know. I just, just how it felt. Yeah. Oh, well, well, let's see what our listeners thought. Um, so our first rating comes from Dieta from Detroit, and she actually gave it an eight out of 10. You are not stronger than an alligator. <laughs> I guess those are alligator emojis. Um, Glennis from Toronto says eight out of 10. Talk to me, goose. <laughs> that's a, that's from, of course, the yeah. um, his, uh, Top Gun yeah. role. Yeah, no, and Alma from Sacramento, like she replied to her comment when she posted that. It was just all like, I like your rating title. Talk to me, Goose is brilliant. It's <laughs> uh, fun. Uh, Renee uh, from Atlanta. Well, actually, she's not from Atlanta anymore. We shouldn't call her Renee from Atlanta. Um, anyway, Renee, she says, eight out of 10. Seriously, Dr. Everett, you're going to jump in that water with an alligator. Um, what is that emoji there? I think it's an alligator, like it's supposed to be. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, not to mention a zombie. <laughs> and then we see, I think those are emoji zombies. Mm-hmm. And then uh, face palm and face palm and a bunch of like shock faces. Sh- yeah, shock face emojis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I didn't understand that either. All right. Mike from Asheville gave it a seven out of 10 to paging Dr. Green. Yep. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that in a minute. Al- Alma from Sacramento says seven out of 10 boring ass Walker documentaries. Mm-hmm. LOL. <laughs> and Ivan from Minnesota gave it a two out of 10. Let the Gators have this one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they got a part. <laughs> all right. Well, that was all our listeners rating. So let's get into our awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. All right. Our first listener's awesome sauce comes from Dieta from Detroit. And she said, how did that nature preserve, preserve itself in just one area? While kingdom at its finest and a whole lot of animal emojis. Oh my. Okay, episode would have loved to know the timeline if this episode of this episode in the apocalypse because he has a whole drone with batteries or a charger question mark and how thinking face emojis plus he has all this high tech equipment with cameras watching the homo mortis <laughs> he has a coat made of dead skin and she wears a mask made of the dead is she from the whispers uh she didn't wear a mask she talked about masks but she never had a mask um how are the walkers not eating the escaped animals from the zoo was there a fence to keep them out of the nature preserve good question i actually kind of had some of that in my what's thank you dieta thank you dieta clinis from toronto is next she says alligator smiley face although it was so big it looked more like a crocodile Hey, CRM, something else to weaponize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had some CRM vibes this episode. <laughs> yeah, a little, yeah. a little bit. All right. Well, last but not least is Mike from Asheville. And he says the entire coat made of walker skin. Fun twist to what we already know. Yeah, I thought of that too. Because mm-hmm. we've never, we have not seen that ever. No. Um, we've seen, yeah, p- putting the guts on, but yeah, it's kind of like, ah, that's a great idea. So I wonder again, how far are we into the ZA? And yeah, that's a very good s- item to have. <laughs> that is one thing that wasn't really, um, well delve in, delved into in Mm-mm. this episode. There, there was some inkling some hints that it may be quite a bit in the future Mm -hmm. but also not so it's like i mean it's far enough ahead that they've built this big trench right you know sort of like an artificial canyon if of sorts like you know 
Right. No, I know that. And I kept, I actually like was trying to like look at every single thing when, on one of my rewatches being like, is there anything that kind of hints at to like the time? And the only thing that I could find or not find, it's just the fact that at the end he said 4306 video log. So it's like, is that 4,306 or does that denote something? But yeah, it's, yeah. they weren't, they don't want us to know. Just, yeah. And, um, you know, clearly it's been long enough that some, um, demarcation, you know, some, you know, if you want to call it like a demilitarized zone or, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) a dead zone, um, has been established. Uh, and you know, that would assume that they've either killed or herded or otherwise neutralized all of the walkers into a section of the United States or at least a section of a state. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, who, who knows? I mean, it would be a major project for them to build a 40 foot trench, even if it was like part of the Mississippi river or something. Right. Right. You know, it'd still take them a long time to, to build something like that. Yeah. Well, that's what we'll get into that in some of our Watts's and I'm sure some of our listeners have the same questions. Uh, well, next Mike, uh, said chompers, both what Amy called them. And then the gator chomping <laughs> that made me laugh <laughs> <Yeah>. out loud. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's funny. Uh, the entire studying and observing storyline. He was dedicated to it and learned some stuff. It's something that would have absolutely happened in our world. Yep. Uh, totally agree with that one. And then he said the one walker he studied that was immobile. I'm glad they showed that. In theory, he now knows how long they last before just shutting down. Yeah, I... Well, I, I agree. That that was probably the only part of the episode that I did enjoy. Like you said, it's like I enjoyed the science part of it. And, you know, there was, you know, there was fun in that. But it just, as the characters together, that's where I had my issues. So, yeah. But yeah, we'll talk about that later. So, well, that was all our listeners' awesome sauces. So, let's go into ours. Um, I guess I'll let you go ahead first. Well, um. The funny thing that that I, I've got to say about about him, um, I'm giving him a compliment, but it's kind of a weird compliment, and that is that uh, Anthony Edwards was really good in this role. But part of the reason why he was so good in this role is because I didn't even recognize him uh-huh. in the role. Like he <laughs> was close to unrecognizable. I mean, I um, you know I heard heard him. Uh, talk a little bit about and um i could react a little bit from that so i could you know hear his uh i guess voice like yeah i could i could hear him you know i once i was like you know i could place his voice but um still i uh he didn't look at all like the Anthony Edwards that I remember, he didn't didn't, rem- uh, didn't look like the one from like Revenge of the Nerds mm-hmm. or from Top Gun or from ER. Um, he just was, he just looked so different. And, you know, one person I can think of in the same way right now is because I just saw footage of him today was uh, Brennan Fraser. Oh, okay? yeah. Brennan Fraser's like what? 53 years old or something like that. He's close to my age. And, um, you know, I remember the Brendan Fraser from the mummy. Right. Yeah. And I see him now and like, I just see some like middle-aged dude and (laughs) yes, I'm middle-aged, so he should be middle-aged, but, um, I don't know. He, he, the same thing I can say about Anthony Edwards. It's, it's like, he really didn't look like himself. So I don't know if that's a good thing to say. Um, you know, I would say so because that made him like you didn't, his character didn't get like kind of like you could get into his character a little bit more without being like, Oh, Hey, look, that's so, and so, you know, from, cause I have that problem with a lot of shows I watch where I'm like, Oh, Hey, that's like, you know, Renee from, you know, like whatever the show or like, yeah. 
Well, like the best best one I can think of is uh, John. Um, what was his name? Um, the gunfighter. John Wayne. No, <laughs> the uh, the he had a. I can't think of his name. He had a the name of a fish on fear. Oh, Dory. Garrett Dillon. Oh, Darren. Yeah, John Dory. Yeah, thank you. I was just going to say Garrett Dillahunt. Um, you, you and Mark both wouldn't accept him, even though I was like in love with the character, and both you guys were <laughs> like, you know, thinking he was uh, an evil guy, and I'm like, he's not evil, and yeah, sure enough, I was right. So I felt good about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's because it's hard to sit there and disconnect him from like other shows that I really liked. And it was like, wait, no, I can't quite get into it. But, you know, he is a great actor. But you're right. He was a good guy. And we were like, nope, he's ter- he's can't trust him. <laughs> oh, well, that's it. Uh, well, that's the thing. And he he reminded me of Dale a lot. That's the very first thing I saw when I saw like the previews. And then even when the first shot with him in it, like he just reminded me of Dale from, you know, what, you know, earlier, you know, Walking Dead. And uh, I don't know if that's what they were going for, or if that was even a thing, but it was. it's very uncanny, I think, of just kind of how he, like, came off. But it was still good, though, for, you know, good acting. I mean, I'm not, you know, I think he did a good job with that role. So, um, all right, well, I'll just go into my awesome sauce. Um, because, you know, while I did rate it low, like, I did like the feeling of this kind of the whole setting. It was like this lone scientist studying walkers. And then yeah. we, were, and we were getting this kind of Discovery Channel documentary <laughs> of the ZA. And, and that was the thing where, like, they didn't really let us know how, f- like, timeline-wise. Like, when was this? Like, how far ahead? You know, we just know some stuff that they've mentioned at comic-con or like you know just different interviews but that's still not true you know set in stone like oh this was exactly this many years you know from the start of the za but one of the things i I just kept getting this flashback from the like to the scientists of what we saw in world beyond who were like studying the walkers you know and then they were trying to find ways to like slow them down and like you know just studying them to try to figure them out um so that part i did enjoy because you know it gives us kind of more info or I mean, it didn't really give us a ton, but it's like to f- learn more about like you know how like the science behind the zombies, like and how are they trying to figure out ways to like stop them or slow them down to survive? Because like in World Beyond, they were like studying mold or something like that that was like I guess overgrow you know growing all over them, and then that would kind of like s- slow them down or immobilize them or kind of break them down more or something like that. So you know. That stuff is like a lot of fun. Um, but there's just the rest. There's other parts of the episode or the part of the episodes. I just like it just kept pulling me away from that. So I don't know. I think they had a good idea. And whether or not it was just because of whatever reason, they just, you know, like I will get into it. I don't want to like try to m- mesh all our sauces together. So <laughs> I'll just say I like I like the concept and that part I did enjoy. Yeah. 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 And I'm glad that you mentioned that as well, because that was uh, a highlight of it. I I liked, you know, I mean, we've we've seen it. We've seen we've seen this kind of thing on World Beyond. We've seen it in um, we've seen it somewhat on fear. Like I'm thinking of the um, season three opener. There was a little bit of that where they were doing tests. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've seen like Milton and a few other people that's what I'm about to say, yeah, I was saying Milton, yeah, yeah, so it's like that's that's that part, yeah, I totally agree. It's like I like that that part is what is kind of like besides the survival, the zombies, and all this other stuff, it is kind of the science that is like also like a big hook of the show when they do give us little tidbits you know it's like they did it to us for season one when we actually got to go to you know the cdc and like see like the clips and even though that's not in the comic or anything like that but it's like putting that in there like it's like yes if this happened 
the CDC or other, you know, agencies or just the world would be like, hey, we're trying to figure this out. Oh, here's, you know, we're, we're testing and we're recording and <laughs> to see what this thing is, you know, it's that isn't a lot of interest. But other than that, I mean, I know, yeah, I, I had some of the same awesome said everybody else. So I just kind of like just that's really the only one that I wanted to add. Uh, so I guess then that leads us into our weak sauce. You're worthless and weak. Uh, do you want to start first? Ivan from Minnesota. Um, he says, I didn't like Dr. Everett and thought Amy was incredibly annoying. Both were less than adept at killing walkers this far into the apocalypse. And for being in the future, we sure didn't learn a lot. This episode could have fit on fear <laughs> and what kind of emojis are those i think those are like sleeping i can see some z's above the oh head. yeah 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 sleeping <laughs> emojis yeah uh thank you ivan yeah yeah i, I mean that that's kind of the there wasn't a lot of good chemistry between the two but i guess there wasn't supposed to be like it, this wasn't like the first episode where they were supposed to have good chemistry. Mm -hmm. You know, these two had bad chemistry and, and uh, you know, she ended up going exactly where he told her not to go mm. and that she wouldn't survive. And she didn't. Right. So, you know, but um, I especially found, Amy incredibly annoying and Dr. Everett um I don't know he seemed to be uh just not too much into people which he said yeah he wasn't but yeah the, like I mean I that's this is actually kind of part of one of my weeks though too is like I just I felt like the like both the characters Amy was annoying and I just I didn't really like I don't know. It was just like the way she was acting it maybe, or like the, maybe they, the way they wrote it, it just seemed very too, like she was like too chummy with Dr. Everett. And it was like, almost kind of like, like she almost knew him or something. And she didn't want to like ever leave him alone. And was like, you know, I don't know. It just, it just seemed so weird. And no, no. I don't know. It, it just didn't fin feel genuine. Like, I yeah. didn't feel like they, like their characters together, like I, they just didn't fit and there was no chemistry and it was just kind of like, okay, here's, she's just going to be annoying. And then he's going to like, I hate people. And then they kind of come in together and be like, oh, we love nature. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was a bit of a stretch, um, mm -hmm. on that. And then still like, it was pretty obvious that they, you know, they didn't have that kind of togetherness or whatever there wasn't any common ground except for with animals but they or should i say nature but at the same time it wasn't like it wasn't a closeness there like the what the the common bond wasn't so close because yeah. he's kind of looking at nature including the chompers as part of nature right right where as you know most most people, including Amy, would re would refer to them as you know not of nature. Right, right. I she guess. like she yeah. She looks at them as a natural, and he looks at them as like a natural like evolution. Like right. you know, it was, so it is like a different. You know, that's why he even like was telling Amy to like oh stop because her friend was being eaten. You know, when they found her friend or whatever at the, at the end. So, you know, no, 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 let nature take its course. You know, he was like, people are not, uh, you know, above, you know, <laughs> right. the, right. the, the homo mortis. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I was going to say. He, he named the, the dead homo mortis, which is something we've definitely not heard of before. So we, right. we actually got two different names for the dead. We got like a chomper's name, which is, similar to most of the names we get and then we get a latin name <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know homo mortis and you know science name <laughs> dead man i guess is what that would be um so okay <laughs> uh 
I uh, guess so. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you, Ivan. All right. Well, then the only we only got one more week sauce, and that came from Alma from Sacramento, and she says, "I was bored, and I knew this fush was going to let the Amy girl die." And then cussing face emoji. All in all, I'm just not loving these tales so far, and I know I'm probably among the few because the general consensus I keep hearing in all the pods I listen to is positive, but I just can't get on the train. She's like, meh face emoji. Yeah, I think I mean, I, this is the first episode of, you know, that we've gotten so far that I've really didn't really kind of enjoy. I've, I've enjoyed all the last three. And, you know, the last two just like being something different. But this one definitely felt a little, you know, it had good points in it. But, you know, I think this is, I think the only thing I would say that I would kind of uh, equivalent this episode as itself to was like the little extra episodes we got during the pandemic. You know, the the 11 or 10 plus whatever with The Walking Dead, where it was just like, oh, here's some just like character, you know, like. Carol and Daryl, and then this and that, you know, whatever. And then it just kind of like didn't really have anything to do with the story, but it just kind of like, oh, here, here's something to watch, you know. And it, it just, it, you know, they they weren't all that interesting, not all of them, but it, you know, it was just kind of like, well, these are just like extras, you know, fun, just something to watch, you know, just give us Walking Dead, here you go. And so, in this sense, I felt like this episode was very like, oh, here, let's just kind of do this thing because it created more questions than answers, you know? So it's right. like, it, so it, it left it not being like this, like, Oh, self-contained thing. Let's just entertain to enjoy. It added a whole lot of like, okay, well then what does this mean? And then how does this fit? Because who built the trench, <laughs> you know, like why, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah, it just, it just kind of was what it was. <laughs> well, and it, it almost seems like there's some, you know, extra extra governmental you know um organization that did that right right and it happened at probably several years in the past so you know it it would have to be one would think it would have to be um several years you know several years after like the walking dead right but who knows how how many oh. years and Right, right. It could be, you know, it could be five years. It could be ten years. It could be the same time, um, just in a different part of. We know it's not in Texas because, mm. um, well, you know, radioactive. So, <laughs> um, yeah, she says something ch- Chattahooga or something like that. Chattahoochee, so, isn't yeah. that like Georgia or somewhere around there or? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, that, I mean, it, it, I think that's you know, where that is. Yeah, I was trying to pull that up, so I, I didn't have time to, like, try to deep into it. But, I mean, it, it's in that area, I guess. Yeah. Um, forms the southern half of the Alabama-Georgia border, as well as a portion of Florida. So, oh, okay. So, yeah. well, that's a new area. But, um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I'll just, like, we can move on because I've got some other things to add and... Yeah. my what sauce but yeah anyway it's it's mostly in georgia and a good part of it is uh along the alabama georgia border so okay anyway so it's all right one can assume that it is you know atlanta ish again yep yeah um all right well that was all of our week sauce from our listeners thank you alma all right, well, let's go into our weak sauce. Well, um, my turn for weak sauce. Uh, I just basically said, similar to what we were just saying, uh, when is this? Mm-hmm. It's a little little hard to figure out. And, you know, it would be nice if they actually said something about it. Um, you know, we, we find out that the colleague, you know, um, whatever they called him, 21, I know it wasn't test subject 21, but, um, no, I think his name was M- Mosley. Do- yeah. I okay. think it was doc- Dr. Mosley, whoever that was okay. specimen 21. Well, the, the main thing that I was thinking of though, was, um, I kept on thinking of to 
thinking of um, season one, uh, Test Subject 19. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we've also, I forget what they called them in uh, World Beyond, but they didn't call them Test Subject. It was something else. Um, but it was neither of those titles. But anyway, um, so aside from aside from when, um, the, the other, you know, issue that it's not really an issue, but it just was kind of a retread. I, I said, and that that's, um, we had another amputee weapon. So it's something we've seen before. Um, of course in the comics, um, Rick Grimes has one. Um, thankfully he never had that on the main show, but, um, other people that we've seen with kind of an NPT weapon would include Merle, mm -hmm. um, Aaron, who, you know, had, had that, I think the most impressive, um, uh, NPT weapon. Um, we see on fear, we see now Alicia has, has that well, you know, and her, her current state, um, live or dead. All right. <laughs> seems seems like dead, but and now Amy and I'd say of the um, of the amputee weapons, hers was least impressive. Now I was trying to remember: are there is there anybody was there anybody else that had like an amputee weapon that was on any of the shows that I can think of? I I can't think of anybody. I can't either because it's like I I don't because you know what I'm thinking I'm like oh yeah we have our main people our main characters whatever that you know have those but I have no idea oh. if maybe there was somebody that was just like you know an extra you know like that might have had one or something I don't know well okay so no d didn't have um didn't have a weapon but certainly Herschel was an amputee um you know his his leg right um. So I mean that that's that's another another one. Um, was that doctor at the pharmacia? Whatever did he, was he an amputee? I don't think so. He got no. He bit, got bit he, in well. The neck he or got something. he got bit in the neck, but it wasn't. You know, um, cl it clearly was a crazy person, not uh, not uh, somebody yeah, not who was. Yeah. Uh yeah, so I, I I don't know. There there may be others, but without cheating and going to look, um I don't recall of any, but I want to say that there was. I just can't remember who. Yeah, I Yeah, uh well maybe it'll come to us. <laughs> um yeah, it's uh like I well I you already did the, the MP2 weapon um and the wind and stuff like that. That kind of was some of the same of my weak sauce. Um yeah. But in the sense of though we so they didn't really let us know when this was, but just the way Amy was handling her weapon of choice just seemed so like like she was not very skilled at something that seemed to be like, Oh, this is like what I've had with me for who knows how long I would assume that you didn't just lose your arm or your hand or whatever. And that you just now fashion this and this is what you're using. We don't know because they don't like let us know, but it just seems so unwieldy. And so just like a little too big for mm -hmm. her that it just was like, okay, like, you know how, so if we're, not that just leaves questions like well how far are we because this felt like it's like okay then you know she talked about how she's lost so many people that you know she's cried herself to sleep and then you know this whole like that's the human connection whatever but then it's like okay well then you still don't seem to really know how to handle yourself around walkers you know like you're you're still having issues and problems so it's <laughs> I, I i have a hard time feeling that like you've been doing this for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that um, I, I went ahead and looked at this because I, I had to know. Um, so let's see here. Well, some of these, I, I'm not going to consider um, 
amputations. Cause like, for example, the guy that they, they, um, you know, dug like used in guts, um, they, on the wiki, they call him an amputee. Well, not really, but, but, um, uh, so, okay. So some of the other amputees, um, uh, Randall, which I totally forgot about oh, in yeah. season two, he had to have his, uh, leg amputated to get him off the uh spike um okay big tiny was going to be amputated but um but that other guy um i can't remember his name the guy that uh rick puts the uh, machete like you know chop chop oh to, yeah, 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 yeah yeah he got oh. him first okay um Sean is sliced in half by the helicopter's main rotor assembly after it crashed. Oh, okay. So that was one in the, uh, with the governor. That's another one. Andrew cut a deer in half and took out its heart. Who the heck is Andrew? From Walking Dead? Yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, was he one of the prisoners? Maybe. Uh, Ryan Samuel's arm was about to, now Ryan Samuels I know who that is that is um the two girls um uh what was their names oh uh the Lizzie and Mika the, Liz, like Lizzie that. and Mika yeah her their uh father so he was he was bitten and was about to be amputated before he was or already bitten um Bob Stuckey he he was amputated. Yeah. Um, okay, Gareth had a few of his fingers shut off or shot off by by Rick. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, Joan, who the heck is Joan? Sounds. I like- don't even know who that is. Oh, I know who Joan is. Okay, that was when they were in the ho- the hospital. The the. Uh, um, oh yeah, where Beth like got yeah yeah involved in or S- what was it S- Slag Town or something? No, that's not right. Sl- a sl- a slab Town. Slab uh, Town. That's yeah. it. Um. Okay. So yeah, some of these are just not really yeah, like not quite. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Okay. Fear. Um. Who is Calvin Jasper? Lost his leg and lower jaw when Nick runs him over with Travis's truck. Okay. I don't remember that, but okay. Griselda, that's uh, uh, Daniel's wife. He, she got her, her leg amputated. Jake Otto, that was, um, you know, the, the, I guess the good, uh, the good Otto son. He had his um, arm cut off. That's right. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Edgar got his finger shut off by John Dory. I don't remember that. Um, Virginia, her, her hand was amputated by June. Um, then of course we got Alicia already. Um, uh, and oh yeah. Paul Arno, um, has his hand amputated as well. And then in world beyond Elton also had his, um, arm amputated and we see that right at the end so yeah so anyway my point is we've seen a lot of amputees there's even amputees in the webisodes and i'm not going to bother mentioning those yeah so yeah but how many of them actually had weapons though (laughs) well not uh, of that list um not too many just merle uh merle aaron and Alicia and Amy. No, Amy. Yeah. I don't think anybody else did. Maybe yeah. Elton. Maybe Elton did. He maybe. I yeah, guess. he may have. I'm sure he did after the show ended and then he's got like options, but um yeah, so I don't know. I just it was there was that was part of the reason of why like that was made this this episode hard to watch or really get into is because it just, it had more questions than answers. There was the characters, you know, not quite meshing together because, you know, chummy might be the wrong word to describe what Amy, it just like she, and I, maybe this is part of what, 
we end up re- you know getting to see at the end whenever her camp is wiped out that they were actually were the headhunters but um that oh that yeah yeah so it's like she lied and like she was obviously there for those other reasons and she, she there was just like there was no like <clears throat> like this i probably say this in my watch sauce so maybe i'll just hold off so um anyways yeah there's just there was just something there that just wasn't quite clicking and then also it's like oh here's a whole bunch of stuff that the, there's this whole dead zone and then it's like a 40 you know foot ravine you know and then it's like okay well <laughs> like what is this how did it get built what was its purpose or is this just like you know we're just supposed to just say okay cool this is just what it is so anyways that was just weak i guess yeah yeah all right all right well i guess that just takes us into our what sauce what 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 all right, I'll just start first with Mike from Asheville, and he said, "Were we meant to think Amy's group really were the headhunters?" Question mark. Yeah, and that's what we were just wondering. I, mm-hmm. I think the I think the answer is yes. I think so too, because we see her at the very beginning when she's like when Doctor Everett like basically following her around, or like sends the drone after her or whatever. She had a head like in her hand and then she dropped it and then like started running off. And then Dr. Everett sent his like drone to go see what was going on after he saw all the dead headhunters or the you know, dead bodies. I'm going to, I'm going to mention that as, as a, as an awesome sauce. We finally get to see the use of a drone in in this show. Um, now mind you drones weren't that common in 2010 but they certainly did exist so yeah it's cool to see them actually used because there would definitely be advantages to using drones assuming that you have the power to be able to use them yeah yeah because you could you could put up a few drones and be able to like keep track of herds and where they're going and um you know when packs of like um you know when they're yeah. coming together and and going apart you know you can uh, keep track of all that you can you could maybe do something with a drone to cause it to make a lot of noise and maybe be able to draw walkers away from mm-hmm. uh, an area so anyway there there's a lot of potential um benefits there that you could get into using them so um i just that that's definitely a positive then that's kind of you know when i say I, I like to see the science part that's something that uh yeah yeah no and i think that's that's probably also kind of one of the things that they did use in this not only just because it's like yeah they're very handy and in a scientific method that would allow you to scout ahead and follow herds but it is the first time we've ever seen a drone and like you said 2010 when the za started that that wasn't a very common thing they they were they existed but not like as how they are now right um so to have a functioning drone is what kind of clues into being like oh this is kind of future you know like future right. tech that's you know like you could get you know in 2010 you could get a 3d printer they they existed um you could get a a, dro- a a drone you could get all you know several several things that you can get today but not as commonplace not as cheaply so you know that drone was probably worth five thousand dollars for all we know i don't know mm-hmm. whereas now you could probably get one for 200 yeah definitely um all right well he goes on with this what size he says so what was the point of taking heads uh good question and dr everett said that it was like it's kind of like he can he considered the head earners just like you know like they they did it for their own like propaganda or something like that. Like they used it as like, you know, deterrence and like propaganda. So, which also begs the question then like, okay, well then yeah, they're, they collected a lot of heads, 
you know, what we saw at the end. There was cases in case, or you know, big giant <laughs> boxes full of them. So it's like if they're used to kind of like what control the populace or to scare people off or like whatever. That was one of my questions. It's just like, well, then, like, aren't there enough walkers already outside the dead zone that you could collect heads that way? <laughs> like, it just kind of didn't yeah. quite, quite make sense. Yeah, you know, it's not like they're um, like a fruit crop or something, <laughs> you know? Well, but it adds to the question that you were just kind of saying. It's like, oh, was this dead zone, like, did they end up corralling a lot of the dead into this? You know, like, is that what this was built for? You know, it's kind of like, is is that like, oh, there's only so many walkers now that that's like the, where the big cache of them are. So that's why they're like collecting heads. Well, I mean, I had I had a, a non sociopathic um, reason for it, that if there are a number of people that are living, right? And most of the people that are dead are in these dead zones. Perhaps maybe a number of them are like looking for their loved one, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe they're gathering these heads to try to, you know, identify the the dead, you know, or at least give um give some solace that, you know, they're they they're dead or you know what i mean you you don't have to keep looking for them anymore yeah kind of thing that so. seems a that seems to be a pretty big stretch though for but i mean i guess it's a, unless it's a black market thing yeah 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 that then i could kind of see something like that for sure yeah it, it have to be a black market thing but um that that's like one not no, like like i say it's it's um there are there are certain um personality issues with that um but you know if it's done for the right reason i can understand it but at the same time it's kind of weird mm -hmm. you know I, I mean all you really need is a photo you know if you're trying to identify somebody just you know take a photo although that might not be so maybe it's harder to take a photo these days in you know in apocalypse time than it is to actually grab the head yeah yeah um i just I, I don't know it just keeps crossing my mind though this being like but then why still because it's like yeah you, you all lived through this whole experience like everybody else that you would say oh i don't know where they are they must be dead <laughs> like you know it's like yeah not many people survive so to sit there like oh i need proof or like i want to have some solace it's like i think you would have already come to terms with that <laughs> you would think so yeah, unless it's, you know, unless it's the Commonwealth and they're like in these like, you know, upper, you know, kind of like a Hunger Games situation where there's the capital or the people that have been protected and, you know, like the, their little like higher status so they can do stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, well, Mike goes on and he says, I think Alma mentioned about the batteries and such. It is um, it is a little curious, but was that not a solar panel on his backpack? I just had Cannon. He had solar. Yes, he had a solar. It certainly did look like it. Yeah. I've seen those too. Like um, uh, uh, one of Brian's cousins, like they ride their bike all the time. And they ha like far, you know, travel basically across the whole states, and like you know, just does all that stuff. And they have one of those little solar panels on their back, and it just charges up their phones and all that stuff, and kind of handy. Kind of probably need to get me a couple little solar panels for the farm. And then he said, um, "Last is mentioning species or specimen twenty one killed and left food for the pack." That to me suggests smart zombies, like in Romero's Land of the Dead. Could that be a subtle setup for the future of what we may see? It may be. Certainly not anything that we've ever heard mentioned before, but it also doesn't seem to be anything that is against what we've seen before. Because well, we've we've kind of seen we've kind of seen walkers do this, where they will like maybe not maybe it's difficult difficult to say that. You know, because we don't see them in the same kind of um, the same walkers doing the same things, but we have seen walkers kind of do what I'm 
trying to explain, which is basically they will, you know, start on one thing and instead of consuming it, they move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Now, um, whether or not they have this presence of mind to like be feeding their pack, like, um, ever it is suggesting, I don't, I don't know. Um, that seems a little bit of a stretch, but, but, uh, it's still interesting. So, yeah. And like, that does kind of go back to like, uh, what Frank Darabont was, you know, from season one and two, like there was that, I think idea that, he may have kind of put in there and we did see because if you go watch season one and two mostly season one there's there's a lot of like oh do the walkers have kind of any other remnants of human emotion right and we did see you know like a walker using a rock to break the, trying to break glass you know or the little girl with the doll picks up the doll you know and go and then goes after rick but that ended up totally being kind of dropped. And so this yep. does make a little kind of at least like here's the science part of it that you know that does make this part of it interesting. It's like, well, yeah, so there we know at least in this the show, I'm not sure about the comic, that you know this virus kind of takes over your brain and then reanim reanimates your body. And so like you know, it turns you into this walking thing that wants to eat, you know, flesh and whatever. But it's like, but is this not still like a hive mind kind of thing? Or is this still like a herd mentality? Like, it's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, do they have any of those kind of like animal instincts? And that's something we don't know because they've never really explored it. So right. this could be just adding a little more to it, but not necessarily saying, oh, this is what we're going to see, you know, in future stuff. But I think it fits more about this whole, like, he's a scientist, he's studying this stuff, you know, he is coming up with hypotheses, and then he's, you know, we you know, saw that at the end with the one that he was saying that was on the ground, that like, oh, how long does, does it survive, you know, like, until it finally shuts down, so. Yeah. There's a, a neat little tidbit, I guess, you know, like, kind of fun science about walkers. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, Mike. Um, you want to take Alma? Alma from Sacramento says, this is my question. How does this guy get power to record his homo mortis documentaries? I don't remember how far into the apocalypse this story takes place, but I think it's pretty far into it for him to have so much footage, LOL. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, a lot of it for whatever reason reminded me of Tio Twaki. Remember Tio Twaki? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the end of the world as, as we know we it. Know it. <laughs> yeah. And well, that's the thing too. Like we didn't see, we know he has this ranger station that is like pretty decked out. So, but we didn't see, are there solar panels on top of that? You know, does is you know, there, there's the question too that like okay the headhunters or Amy's group they had vehicles so there's obviously still gas <laughs> or some kind of fuel yeah. Yeah. so you know it was it left a again this this episode just left a lot of questions about you know the rest of the world not necessarily just what was happening you know with the characters yeah and you know like. There, there is always the, the possibility of vehicles that would work, like if they ran diesel, for example. I think, I think you could more well, don't easily they, make make a, a make diesel fuel than you could uh, like regular gasoline. Yeah. Well, don't they have engines that work on like bacon grease, you know, or like oil, yeah. gr grease and stuff? So, yeah. 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 So it's like, you know, the, there's definitely other things that could be used to make some kind of a, you know, fuel. But um, it's just, again, it's like we don't, you know, they don't. And it's not, I guess, in their, you know, that's not the point of this episode, at least in their mind. It was more about the characters. But it's still kind of like, well, don't just start throwing stuff at us and then just not thinking that we're not going to be like, wait, 
what how do they have that right. <laughs> it does feel like fear or it's like okay so everybody just has radios and walkie talkies that last forever and can reach millions of miles <laughs> in a you know in in radioactive fallout <laughs> yeah of course uh all right well thank you alma um that was all of our listeners uh what sauces so let's go into ours uh I might have already hit a lot of mine already, so. Yeah, and I, the only thing that I wrote down was already covered, like, why are they saving heads? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I came up with an explanation, but I is it the right one? I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of brought up the same, and, you know, we already talked about just kind of like, what is this dead zone? You know, how do the walkers get there? Why is it cut off? Um well, and then I put in here, well, I put in here also lots of falling down. There was a lot of falling down and like, oh, yes, I hurt my leg, so I have to crawl. Or this walker like is chasing me and <laughs> like, I'm just the biggest klutz that of course I'm going to fall and I almost get eaten. <laughs> like Dr. Everett just like goes and runs like willy nilly towards trying to get his specimen 21 and of course he falls and like starts rolling down the hill and injures his leg and his head i, I don't know it just it was like too like on the nose and like the timing per- like of course yes this is the plot this is what has to happen i thought it was kind of funny but then we i guess we end up i guess we end up finding out in the end but i wrote down i was like well it's like oh so hannah who was part of Amy's group, she just, like, ran away. And I just was like, wait, isn't this, like, Amy, you've been talking about these people as, like, oh, they're your, like, you guys are so close-knit, and we help each other, and we love each other. And then this person that you, like, supposedly care about doesn't even stop to say, oh, hey, Amy, where have you been? Thanks for saving me. (laughs) And then I think we get, at the end, it's like, well, they're headhunters, and whether or not they're doing this by choice or against their will, like they're not friends you know they're not that close-knit you know so or at least that's how i came off with it so i just i don't know i just thought it was kind of funny (laughs) it's like she cared a lot about these people but they didn't seem to want to stick around uh oh and i guess i put in here too as a what sauce is dr everett didn't seem to mind letting amy like follow him to the outpost right like in the beginning it's like oh i'm just gonna like ignore you and just keep walking and like do you like you don't that was the another big part of the big what's for to me too is just like okay so this area that dr everett is studying all of nature and then the the homo uh, whatever dead people that it's like then you see then you see someone like that is not supposed to be there but then you treat it as a like oh, they're not of any kind of danger or, like, any kind of, like, like, you wouldn't want them to know where you're at because if these people are surviving and they would want the stuff that you have, that you have power or solar, you know? It's like, it just seems so very, like, okay, do you not view her as a threat? You're just more annoyed with her that you just let her follow you all the way home? I don't know. It just seemed very little kind of, like, just a disconnect for me. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's all I had for really that we we talked about everything else for my Watt sauces. Um, well, is that it? Should we just go to sad and awe? Yep. All right. Here's our sad and awe sauce. Aww. All right. Well, we did get one from Dieta from Detroit, and she said, after all that, she perished with her people, cry face or tear, cry face, and become tagged. <laughs> yeah. I think, though, besides, I don't know, I, I, I'd i have to watch it again, but I mean, I feel like Dr. Everett probably was like, yep, see, you're headhunters, and you lied to me, so I'm going to put a tag on you. But I mean, I guess he did seem a little upset, but same time, he's kind of like, you lied. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotta make make use of him. Uh, all right. Well, that was all our sad and awesome sauces from our listeners. Uh I guess, yeah, Brian, you had one for, uh, I mean, just, just how, um, Everett kind of was looking after 21, Sussman 21. Um, it 
kind of reminded me of Dr. Um, Bennett. Is it, is it Bennett? Bennett? Oh, you ta- that you're talking about from, uh, from world beyond. Actually, I, w- I was talking about Dr. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Edward Jenner. Jenner. Thank you. Yes. Jenner. Edward Jenner. Yes. <sighs> My photographic memory seems to be not photographic <laughs> today. Um, yeah. Anyway, it remind me of Jenner and, you know, test subject 19 was his wife, also a doctor at the CDC. And, uh, you know, it was a simpler, simple kind of, uh, a similar, I should say, kind of thing in the case of um, this doctor. What was his name again? Uh, it was Mosley. Mosley, Dr. Mosley, his, uh, you know, he had cancer, so he, he lasted long, longer than, um, the, the, both Dr. Jenner's for that matter. (laughs) Um, you know, so like one can, one can expect, you know, that probably doctors Everett and Mosley, it sounds like, like they had been kind of, uh, separated by probably years. Yeah. I'm guessing. And then they probably, they were probably stationed there for years. And then, um, he's been kind of watching over him also for years. Now, I don't know which of those three time periods is longer, probably, you know, time period one was probably a fairly long time. Mm -hmm. And he had to, he had to have known him in that, um, observation, post or whatever for it, it had to have been more than months I, I would say years they had to have to to have built that kind of like i'm not going to leave you kind of thing mm-hmm. and you know he almost gets himself killed trying to go after you know this zombie who is getting eaten by an <laughs> alligator <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like uh you 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 don't need to be going after him so yeah um anyway so that that's yeah yeah i mean that was the main thing that i i thought that was uh sad and i guess um seeing amy it was kind of a foregone conclusion for me that um he was gonna find her but i I kept hoping that he wasn't gonna find her that he was gonna find her alive but when we see her and she's you know very much dead um yeah (laughs) you know that was sad too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there wasn't much for me. I just, I put, it's like, I guess the horse in the beginning during Dr. Everett's monologue. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Horses, horses just really don't have any, any good during the ZA. We've seen so many <laughs> being chomped on and you think that horses are fast and could just like run away. But yeah, I guess something it got surrounded or just it was sick. You know, the one thing we don't see at all in the zombie apocalypse is a cat. Yeah. But- have we seen, have we seen the only, the only cat I can think of is Skidmark. The Skidmark. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know of any other cats we've seen. Maybe there is, but Skidmark would be the only major one. Because cats know how to like <laughs> stay hidden and like stay away from people if they want to, and so there's probably more cats than dogs for sure in the ZA. <laughs> all right. Well, if that was all our sad and awesome, that takes us into our feedback. We can talk about. We're done talking. Time to listen. All right. Well, we have a voicemail from Renee. Uh, and she was able to get her the the rating in, but uh, she was running out of time. Or like posted on the Facebook group that was just like, "Oh, I didn't get my chance to put my feedback." I'm like, "Hey, just send it in." So I think she did the voicemail, which is always the best way to do it. I think. So all right, Renee, here. Let's listen to your voicemail. Hi guys, this is Renee from Fairburn. I'm calling in about tales um of the tales from the Walking Dead. And I am not going to be able to do, um, I guess, post my feedback on the 
feedback page on Facebook. So I'm just going to do my call in. And I see that we have quite a few new members. I'm like, okay, we are seriously growing. I am so happy. But um, yes, this episode was really good to me. Um, it just reminded me of back in the day when, you know, when Walking Dead first came on, um, maybe season one, season two, how you would meet people and they would say they got, they were separated from um, their family or from their people somehow. And, um, you know, going through the woods, it just, it was, it reminded me a lot of uh, The Walking Dead. So I really enjoyed this episode. This is what I like on The Walking Dead. I like, you know, zombies and I like to see how people um, react to the apocalypse at the beginning because um, cl- clearly the doctor, to me, he, he, he probably, more than likely, he was not, um, I'm not going to say crazy, but he was not um, I don't know what word to use, but he was not as crazy because <laughs> I'm going to still use that word uh, in the beginning. But of course, I feel like, you know, during the apocalypse, it probably would drive you over the edge. And I don't know, like I said, crazy is not the word that I'm looking for. I can't even think of the word that I'm looking for. Um, but I wouldn't say he was crazy, but it just, it just it, I don't know. It, it messes with your mind, I think, because like he was believing that the, um, the dead, the zombies would, you know, could, um, relate to one another, that the zombies were, he was leaving the kill behind so the other zombies could eat and stuff. Like, you know, he, weird. That's the word. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he probably had a little bit of weirdness about him before the apocalypse, but he really got weird, you know, thinking like that. And, you know, that's probably, and, you know, what people will need, some people will need to survive because they just can't deal with reality. Who the hell would have ever thought that it would be an apocalypse with zombies? I mean, you know, we watch zombies on TV. So to actually be an apocalypse and this is zombies now, it probably would drive someone over the edge. So that's what, I, you know, um, so I, like I said, I like episodes like this when they just show you from the very beginning how people are. And to me, both of them was telling tales. It was really ambiguous with both of them because it's like, I don't trust you and I don't trust him. I think that he was telling the tale about the guy. I think that uh, it was something more to him and the guy um, because you were trying to get in the water with an alligator. I mean, this cannot just be a doctor that you knew or scientists or whatever before the apocalypse or whatever. I feel like it was something more. And then with her, I feel like that she was telling a tale um, pertaining to um, the heads. I feel like that was her group that was collecting the heads. I feel like, you know, she was telling the tale as far as that. So, which is it's always, to me, when it comes to the Walking Dead franchise period, is always going to be ambiguous because to me, you can't trust anyone. Someone's always telling the tale about something or they're adding and subtracting subtracting you know it's always something that's left out it's always something it's like with the terminus you know come to terminus we can help you whatever you know we're there we're a good group blah 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 but you left out the fact that you're cannibals you know it's always something in the walking dead so you really have to be on your p's and q's and it's really sad that you would think during an apocalypse that we were all to come together as one, you know, as a human race and go up against the zombies. But you have to be more concerned about humans than the zombies during an apocalypse because no one tells the truth. Everybody is telling the tale. Um, that I used to look, I like when Rick would, you know, meet people and it's like Rick had a good sense of people he can just somehow he can tell he can and and more than likely it was because he was a police officer and that's what they do you know he can sense whether somebody was telling the truth when he asked them you know how many kills did you have did you kill anyone blah 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 um and I could be being biased because of course of course those are my peeps and I love them <laughs> and they could not do any wrong to me even when Rick bit the guy's throat I was like yeah bite the shit out of his throat to bite him because he was threatening talking about what he was going to do to call and Michonne bite that ass. So, of course, I feel like my peeps can do no wrong. But, yeah, during Apocalypse, I just feel like, you know, folks is always telling a tale and you never know who you can trust. And um, so, yeah, of course, you see how I really got deep. So, you know, I love this episode. (laughs) But, all righty, I will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Oh, thank you, Renee, as always. Love your voicemail. Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah, I kind of make a a, a good point there because you know we, we we still don't know exactly the time frame, but 
you know, I think what they were trying to do with his character was that, you know, he, you know, he's a scientist, you know, I'm sure he, besides his own colleague, Mosley, who obviously, I guess, you know, died of cancer, and then he ended up, you know, using him to study. And I think that was one of Mosley's wishes. But you would think that, like, he's probably a very much more introvert. And so being by himself and like not around people and just doing his work and being around nature, stuff like that probably really was like, you know, like probably his perfect <laughs> like setting for him to be like, you know, of like surviving in the ZA. And, you know, that's kind of how I got what his personality was. I, you know, I didn't really think he was crazy other than the fact that, you know, he really was into his work. Um, in nature yeah. and you know that leads to being able to rationalize the fact that he was like telling um amy no 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 no, no don't go save your friend just let nature take its course like he was being more detached from you know the human connection as she liked to put it so right you know and i'm sure that's what you would do if you're just living alone and doing that so uh I mean, it was kind of nice that he wasn't crazy, like, you know, crazy, crazy, like we've seen people be. And it was just more of like, I just want to do my work and just leave me alone. <laughs> um, Yeah, I just, I didn't like this episode, just so, like I said before, just like the character interactions. But I mean, I do like a lot of being able to see, like, like you, like Renee, it was just like, you know, I like zombies. I like Definitely, I enjoy being able to see the reaction of, like, the, when the ZA started, you know, fear started off that way, and that was a big draw for me. It just, you know, then kind of, it, you know, evolved into something else. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. so, I would definitely like to see more of that, and that's kind of what I was thinking that Tails was going to be a little bit part, more of, um, but I think we're seeing that, you know, they're, they're telling, they're telling stories, and... You know, I think some are going to land and some won't. Yeah. So yeah. I just kind of hope that they start figuring out. Just like with any show, they got to get their feet, you know, they got to kind of stretch the legs and start kind of seeing what works and, you know, figure it all out. Because that's how all shows are. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Short Treks, which wasn't like a full, you know, TV series, but, you know, they, they put the put it on when there was no other trek going on you know once a month and there were some that were really good and and uh some that landed and some that did not and you know um some people loved and some people mm -hmm. didn't love and and some of the ones that some people loved others didn't love you know it, it uh so anyway that, but i'm finding it a lot of them are like that here of the four that we've seen i would consider this one to be my least favorite of the four mm -hmm. um and uh yeah so yeah we'll see i have been in general um more interested in these episodes though than i thought i was going to be yeah so. i would i i think i am d definitely more interested in just tales as the show itself because i do like the idea of like having something that's a little bit kind of more removed from like the main show and even you know fear like just like the main thread of like what's going on you know we've got crm and all that kind of stuff in uh fear which then ties into the main show. You know, it's like, so there's, there's like the big arc that whatever they're working on that, you know, we'll see. But I do like just having, it, you know, like the webisodes where it's just like, hey, just show me like, you know, some new person that's trying to survive and, you know, like, yeah, and take us in different spots, you know, and do some fun stuff. It's just, yeah, some are landing more than others, but I think these are kind of the growing pains. And I think that, Tales of the Walking Dead could definitely be like, be like a filler in the summer while we're waiting for like the next, you know, the Daryl spinoff, which that could turn into maybe a longer, bigger, you know, show. And then during the summer, we can be like, oh, hey, here's some fun little, you know, basically little like short tracks, you know, it can have little connections or tidbits to the main, you know, show 
but it's just fun to see something, you know, just something new. But we'll see, I guess. Uh, all right. Well, thank you again, Renee, as always. Um, always love the voicemail. All right. Well, that gives us into our written feedback. So uh, do you want to start with Dieta? Sure. Dieta, she says, I didn't understand this episode because I needed to see how she died and if her people were collecting heads. If so, what for? Overall, okay episode. I just think it went over my head. And um, facepalm emoji, I think. Or shrugs. Times three. Or shrugs. I guess that's a, yeah, I guess that is, yeah, yes, it shrugged. is a shrug. Yes. <laughs> All uh, right. Use the magnifying glass. <laughs> I know. I probably should increase the, the, the size of those so that we can see them because I have a hard time seeing them. Uh, all right. Well, the next is Mike from Asheville, and he said, I enjoyed this episode for what it was. I understand it's definitely um, slower than the other episodes, but it was paced like a documentary. Getting to hear the walkers discuss as part of nature and not just a threat. That's an interesting plot line. Let nature take its course. I wouldn't mind seeing Dr. Everett show back up in another series. Well, we could see. He could be part of CRM for all we know. Yeah, I don't know. He didn't seem... I know. I he know. could have been. Just, he could have been CRM, I guess. But just, if he was CRM, he probably would have killed Amy. You know, on site. The scientists were different than the soldiers, though. I would say, at least yeah, from what true. we saw in World Beyond. So it's like that's true. But anyways, I I doubt it. It's just he's a scientist. Mm -hmm. Teresa from Florida is next, and uh, thank you, Teresa. I know you're. Uh, a recent listener. So thank you. I love this episode. It took me a hot minute to recognize Anthony Edwards character as they aged him quite a bit, or he aged himself. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen, I haven't seen a picture of him like outside of, you know, something he's playing. So I don't know. I love this actor. So I knew I would love this episode. Dr. Green plays a doctor. How ironic is that? Well, it's Dr. Everett plays a doctor. Oh, well, okay. I, okay. Dr. Green. Okay. I get it. She's calling him Dr. Green from ER. Right, right. <laughs> right. Plays a doctor, Dr. Everett. Okay. This episode was The Walking Dead and gave all those things that made me fall in love with the show. It was the ending that really sealed the deal. I did not see that coming. Thanks, guys. Love your podcast. Yay. Well, thank you, Teresa. And I will get the next episode out as soon as possible. <laughs> so, like, hang tight. Well, you know, I know you're trying, but, you know, as much as I'm trying, I'm failing on the uh, Star Trek side. So, you know. It happens. Just be glad that you're only, it, for those of you that are only Walking Dead, uh, when Kyle is late, just remember, at least it's not me. That's delivering the episodes <laughs> because I'm so far behind. Um, the listeners have not gotten the first two episodes of um, Lower Decks, which are out now, or the last two episodes of uh, uh, Strange New Worlds, and that was in July. So there you go. How bad am I? <laughs> hey, you're not bad just busy that's what happens yeah well two jobs and you know yeah now, I, no. now we're fostering a puppy which is taking extra time and all of that so it's just there's there's a lot going on yep uh all right, right like, let's just continue so we can keep moving forward um all right well thank you Teresa. As always, uh, next is Glenn from Toronto, and as always, she's got some good good feedback here. All right, she says, "Who dug that trench, separating the walkers from the rest of the population? That's an immense undertaking to have it that wide and deep and going on for miles. Was it the CRM? Could have well, been. Could have been. Definitely some kind of organization. Like it wasn't people that put it together. It had to have been some. Oh yeah, like some." organization extra yeah some extra governmental some you know some coalition of settlements whatever um and you know what they did i don't know i've i've read i don't know what this was from some some zombie 
book or something I read where they, they basically, they dug a trench in the Mississippi river and it was a similar kind of thing. So, you know, if you were on one side of the Mississippi, it was safe. And if you were on the other side, it wasn't. So I don't know. Yeah. Again, they don't really explain anything. We just kind of no, have to be like, oh, don't. hey, this is a thing. <laughs> All right. She goes on. She says, Dr. Everett studying the zombies as if they are, are a separate animal species and tagging and tracking them. So even these zombies are showing signs of being actively conscious and adapted to their surroundings with migrating and leaving food for others. Although these zombies are not quite at the point to s- scale the ranger tower wall yet or the ranger's tower yet. Oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. To me, I think it's mostly wishful thinking on Everett's part that um, you know they're they're showing this kind of behavior. But he could be right. I mean, the fact that it's the same, um, you know, um, specimen twenty one that keeps doing this or was continuing to do this. I mean, that does say a lot but that could also be something indicative of the you know if you want to call them species that could just be something of them it's kind of like you know they have built in adhd so Mm -hmm. it's like you know ooh, shiny and they see you know something else that's um alive so they want to go bite that and eat that you know yeah and it also could just be just kind of a a sign of just basically of Dr. Everett's mental state because he knew who, uh, you know, specimen 21 was. So as a son or, uh, you know, as a scientist and him studying that he's trying to find answers. And so he's going to project whatever he wants to make it feel like, Oh, I didn't just, you know, it could be that it's like, you know, this was like his best friend, you know, and losing him, in the ZA under all the stress, you know, this is just how he's coping with it because he's like putting on like, Oh, I'm doing this important work and I'm using my friend to get there. And so he could be rationalizing a lot of things. So there could be absolutely nothing in all of his, you know, science and studies, you know, he's just trying to, you know, you know, he could be just kind of like believing what he wants to believe. And that's just, that's, you know, because he's just trying to deal and cope with it. Uh, um, all right. Next is a, she says, Amy is part of the headhunter, headhunters group, really. And if there weren't zombies, they'd be poaching the animals anyways to get their animal trophies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like with COVID-19 without people around the animals started to thrive and sightings started to occur for animal species rarely seen before the lockdown. Well, that's... Sh- that's an yeah, interesting thing. Yeah. I mean, one thing one thing I saw in um both Michigan and uh Florida when I was that those two places is I saw um foxes, which uh you know were pretty rare. Yeah, I mean they there was a lot that was actually yeah. know, they were t- talking about just like pollution, you know, was like dropped down so much because we weren't driving and everybody was staying home. Definitely. And different cities were like completely clear when they're usually smog. Um yeah, Mike responded to her comment from the Facebook when she say like said he's like I thought the same thing. He's like the parallels were pretty strong and I actually wonder if these episodes were written during a lockdown and that's where the idea came from. Well, I mean I would say for certain they were, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and if not during a lockdown, then inspired by it because, you know, it was um, probably shot in 2021. So, you know, that's still under the COVID, uh, all the COVID yeah. protocols and those COVID protocols and, in, in um, you know, Hollywood are going to be there for probably years to come. I imagine um, yeah. they may be kind of relaxed a little bit and, you know, we hear some things come down from on high about how, like, they're thinking that you don't have to social distance as much and some other things. But you know, I think it's still it's still going to be there. There's still people that are you know getting getting COVID, and you know, like LT had it recently. Um, um, we know other people that have it now, so. 
it, no, nope, it's it's definitely kind of a lot has changed because of the pandemic, and it's like even the thinking, like oh, we're learning to live with it. And there's boosters on the way for the new variant. You know, it's like we're just kind of turning into like the flu shot. But you know, it's like I think a lot is changing. Like with like you know, even talking about like how you work. Like so much came out of like remote work. And now mm-hmm. that that's kind of becoming more of an actual acceptable thing that you right. can like do that. And before it was like, no, you go to the office. Like, oh yeah, you if you're sick, you still go. <laughs> yeah, I mean there there were a number of uh, companies that wouldn't even consider uh, bringing on someone remotely. And now, um, now if if not it being like the first you know thing that they look for, it's certainly you know high on the list. You know, it's like hey, if you like, because in, in a lot of places, like let's let's say, you know, when you were living in Chicago, for example, like you your cost of living where you're at now is probably quite a bit less than it yeah. was when you're in Chicago. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, same same for for me here versus in uh, Tampa. I mean, there's not as big of a, a difference, but there there is a, a difference. Um, so, you know, there's those kind of things. It it makes a, makes a big difference. And, you know, if you, if you have a job, say in Silicon Valley, um, and suddenly you can hire someone from Oklahoma city, um, and don't have to pay them, you know, Silicon Valley, uh, you know, numbers, and yet they're still going to be pretty happy with that. Um, you know, great, Mm -hmm. you know? And probably they'll get the best benefits they've ever had in their whole life and, you know, whatnot. But anyway, yeah. besides the point, um, there, there was a, another point uh, brought up that just got brought up. I saw it pop up while it was, um, yeah. Um, Dieta responding to Glennis, she says, I totally missed the, du- the Doug Trenches part. Was wondering with a thinking emoji, thinking emoji, like how did they keep the dead away? Yes. Through, through the trenches, but how did they build the trenches and who built them and how long did it take? And yes. Well, and then how did they get those trucks into the dead zone? If there's a trench all the way around it, <laughs> you know, it's a good point. <laughs> yeah, yes. They have does the, retractable does bridge. the trench, does the trench have, bridges or was the trench you know built like as part of a waterway system or was it separate you know all all sorts of questions question questions yes all right all right well let's go on uh glennis goes on and says dr everett wasn't too successful in being detached from his zombie subjects with even putting them first before amy's safety insisting it was purely for scientific purposes when he was really attached to them like he would have been with an animal although trying hard to be detached from feeling anything with numbering his studies subjects he really preferred animals to humans (laughs) yeah i mean you could call him the Jane Goodall of, uh, <laughs> uh, of zombies, you know, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what he was, but, yeah. uh, yeah, I, I, clearly he was more, um, interested in the dead versus the living. And, uh, you know, I kind of, kind of felt sorry for him with that. Yeah. Not enough to give him a sad sauce, but you know, yeah. All uh, right. She goes on. She said, I wonder why Amy didn't insist on moving the whole group out of the path of the zombie migration route. She should have known better with missing a hand, which was most likely a result from a zombie chomper biting her hand and her uh, and her then having to cut it off. In spite of the doc's warning, I suppose she thought they could handle the zombies and get more heads at the same time. Which begs the question, if these heads were being used for something other than a trophy and they were being reimbursed for their efforts. Yep. I would have to think that they were, but like I said, why? The only, like other than some, you know, cruel sport, the only thing I can think of is, is uh, you know, uh, memorial for for friends and loved ones. But, you know, like I say, it's like, well, why? Like all you well, would- Well, yeah, no, that, uh, yeah. And we've kind of keep like, keep hitting on this uh you know, just about the whole thing in general, like, oh, what could it mean, blah, blah, blah. Because it also seems like, well, if they were, 
under duress doing this, then like they're you know unless the headhunters or whoever they're being you know under duress from is actually there it's like well you're in this zombie dead zone couldn't you just like run away (laughs) and just leave your trucks and all that stuff and get away or you know i don't know i i i I feel like it's a little bit more maybe on what you were saying it's just that there's something here that they're collecting for another purpose so some black market deal or some kind of this is kind of like a currency or something you know like they're well and she kept on she kept on like referring to herself as, you know, Hey, we're good people. And, you know, we'll, we'll do things differently and stuff like that. Yet they're collecting the heads. So either, you know, they were chumming around with the people that were collecting the heads or they were actually the people that were collecting their heads at which I think is the latter. And either then that brings you to the point of either Amy's not as good a person as she acts like she is or uh she is and their reasons for doing it are just not known to us and there's some you know um positive ulterior motive than than we know but right. anyway we're not going to get an answer so there's no point in continuing to try to figure it out right Oh, all right. Well, she goes on and said, both Amy and Dr. Everett were so clumsy around zombies, you would have thought they'd be more careful and adept um, with their years of tangling with zombies. Ah, uh, exactly. I was tired of all the stupid f- clumsiness <laughs> of this episode. Uh, with everything in the Walking Dead universe, you're going to die sooner rather than later. It's inevitable. Mother Nature or the law of averages at work. <laughs> So did Dr. Everett tag Chomper Amy or let her roam free without the scrutiny? He seemed to be hesitating at that end scene. Yeah. I mean, I thought he was going to tag her. I thought so, too. I think he was just kind of maybe like, uh, you know, could be reading or trying to read too much into it. But like that last scene with him struggling with like, oh, she's dead, you know, but then going to like, I'm going to tag her like that was the human connection. That he was, you know, feeling for the first time. And so, but she got tagged. You know, he's a scientist. Yeah. Well, I mean, he might as well tag someone that he he knows, even if he doesn't know her that well. But, you know, still yeah. replace <laughs> a, a known person with a known person. Yep, that's true. Oh, all right. Well, thank you so much, Glennis, as always. Always good feedback. Um all right. Well, that was all our listeners' feedback. Uh, I don't really have anything else because I think we've hit on a lot of stuff. Everybody has, yeah, as always. So <laughs> I don't yeah, want to add beat over more. dead horse. Um, not to be <laughs> confused with the uh, cold open. I think that was. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, then that leads us into our news, ratings, and info. There's a couple weird stories on the news. All right, well, ratings. Tales of the Walking Dead, Season 1, Episode 4, got a .09 in 1849 with 409,000 viewers. So actually, it c- kind of hung on. Um, it ranked 46th this week compared to last week. Um, and because it's in the top 40, we got the extended you know, like data. So in the 25 to 54, it got a .12. And the 50 plus, a .25. So compared to last week, D... Um, season one, episode three got a point one zero in the eighteen forty nine with four hundred and thirty thousand viewers. Um, ranked forty five, and the twenty five to fifty four was a point one five, and the fifty plus was a unchanged point two five. So, and, and considering you know, um, those those ratings are for um an episode that was on the Sunday prior to Labor Day, um, which is historically not a very good uh ratings day for tv Mm -hmm. um so you know it 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 didn't do badly um trying to see how house of the dragon did um house of the dragon's not doing all that great it looks like it's only getting 1.75 million and a point three seven um 18 to 49 so that's not, I don't think it's well, doing that great. 
Yeah, and isn't that just the what is when it actually airs? Because like streaming does, I I get, no HBO does that. It's like it comes out at the same time that it's actually on air, so you can stream it, mm-hmm. but it doesn't come out until like eight o'clock or whatever the day right. time it is. Yeah, right. that's right. Okay, right. like um, it's comparatively, it looks like it's about on par with um what. The Walking Dead um, at the end of season, the second part of season 11 was getting. Um, the last episode, it got a 0. 0.39 with 1.606 million. So a little higher on the, on the 1849, a little lower on the total number. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, anyway. Well, hey, it's still good to see it's at least like holding. Um, people are might. Tuning in a little bit more, maybe. I don't know. Or the holiday. All right. Well, of course, there was no Talking Dead, so I don't know. I have not seen or heard of anything if we are going to get one after I, season six. I doubt we are. Yeah. And Parrots for the week of August 27th to the two or the second. Uh, yeah, Walking Dead is not on there, which not that we were expecting it. Um, it, it was the previous week, though. Yeah, it was at number 10 at 41.8, but I, yeah, there's so much going on, but um, I guess, I mean, Stranger Things was definitely, like, it was in number one, the She-Hulk was three, and Only Murders in the Building, I don't know, oh, Hulu, I never heard of that one, so, yeah, that is what it is. That's uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short. Oh, okay. Yeah, I still don't have Hulu, but anyways. All right. Well, I don't know if you have any news to add, but I just kind of wrote a couple things that I just saw that came through in one of my little email blasts. No, I don't. Nothing to add. Yeah. Melissa McBride um, said in an article with Entertainment Weekly just recently that she was saying that Carol's story isn't over yet. And then after the end of the series, Carol will still have some more story. But then she kind of ended it at that. So, you know, we know that the... Carol and Daryl spinoff turned into the Daryl spinoff and you know it's kind of like are, are she hinting at something or I mean it probably sounds like that she's in talks with you know doing something or you know seeing where because people you know Carol's a you know is a fan favorite for sure so them not t- working something to tell us more stories of Carol or maybe Carol shows up in Dead Island or whatever it's called um because Carol always comes at the last minute to save the day <laughs> with her cookies. Uh, and then last, it was Coleman Domingo won his first Emmy for Euphoria. Um, so good for that because, you know, he does a lot of good work. And, you know, it's good to see our characters and our actors, you know, getting other recognitions for other work. Um, all right. Well, um, well, I guess... LT didn't join us, so I will just yep. let him do the recorded version of this. Hey, LT, you want to tell people how to interact with us? I shall. Uh, we want to encourage you to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That's at Walking Dead TTM. To submit your theories and feedback, most people post in our designated episode thread in our Facebook group, Facebook dot com slash groups slash walking dead ttm you can send us email that's walking dead at talkthroughmedia.com you can also use our feedback form on the web page that's at talkthroughmedia.com slash feedback if you'd like to leave us voicemail remember you can call 216-232-6146 and all of our new episodes are on YouTube. Just search for Talk Through Media and remember to subscribe and click that bell to get notified when we have new videos. Those videos go out first before the podcast does. And to support us, like and review the Talk Through Media Facebook page. You can find that at facebook.com slash talkthroughmedia. And as always, the best way you can support us is in our Patreon. You can find that at patreon.com slash walkingdeadtalkthrough. And we would like to thank our Patreon supporters, Mike Rollo, Scott Kerr, Renee Murray, Dieta Patterson, that guy over there, 
Lawrence Todd. <laughs> Hello. And this guy, me, Kyle McAdams. Remember that Mike, Scott, Dieta, and Renee will be getting an early episode of a version of the episode this week. Uh, you can subscribe to us in Apple Podcasts or your podcast client of choice. And while you're there, give us a rating or review. You can also leave us a review at podchaser.com. There you can actually rate individual episodes or the whole podcast. And as always, remember to share our posts on Facebook and Twitter when we post them or tell a friend. Word of mouth is the best way to get us new listeners. All right, Brian, uh, do you want to, I guess it's like, is there, what else is going on with the network this recently? Sure. <laughs> um, well, right now, right now, the three of us, um, although... Last night we recorded um, Lower Decks, and it was LT and myself that recorded um, the episode for episode two. The least was it the least dangerous game? I think is the yeah. name of the episode. Um, yeah, so we're we're doing uh, Lower Decks right now. We have uh, changed the name of the podcast to the Star Trek Lower Decks talk through to match talk through media, the branding. Um, and, uh, we, we will probably be having out the first episode for season three, episode one. Um, if not out tonight in the next couple of days. Um, and then the one we recorded last night will be out soon after that. And, um, I think episodes nine and 10, of strange and worlds will come right after that. So, uh, yeah, so we've got that going on. Three of us are pretty, uh, happy that the show's mm -hmm. back. Yep. And, um, besides that, of course, um, Kim and James are still going strong with, um, rebinge DS nine. And, uh, you know, that's, that's on weekly. They're in season five now covering the show. Yeah. Um, also, you know, after we're done with doing the strange new worlds, um, episodes we didn't cover, we are going to go back and cover, um, the last six of Picard. So one of those six is recorded already. Uh, so we still have to record, record episodes six to 10. Um, which we'll get in. And then maybe after all of that, we'll kind of do some kind of reflection on 2022 Trek or mm -hmm. something like that and try to get everyone that was a podcaster on that. And, you know, nice. Maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right now, I just want to get through the backlog of episodes. So if I can get through that, I'll be happy. Nice. But yeah, so quite a bit. Um, and uh, if you want to get in touch with us on that, we have a Patreon. That's a patreon.com forward slash Star Trek TTM. The Facebook group for that is facebook.com slash group slash Star Trek TTM podcasts. And of course, you can find all of the uh, podcasts on the Talk Through Media Network at talkthroughmedia.com and anywhere podcasts are available. So, yep. All right. Awesome. Um, yep. And if you find a place where they're not available, let us know and we'll fix that. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Because I know we've had some issues with some. Postings. Yeah. I know Amazon is one of those places that uh, you might have difficulty finding a podcast of ours, but we'll fix that soon. So. All right. <clears throat> well, our next episode of Tales of the Walking Dead, season one, episode five, is called Devon, uh, written by Chan um, Channing Powell, showrunner, directed by Michael E. Satrazemus. So that should be interesting. So showrunner and then Satrazemus has done a lot of directing. Yeah. He's like the Greg Nicotero of, uh, of fear, but, you know, he's directed like things like the grove and you know some big episodes as well yeah so. yeah and the description on uh, from amc plus uh is devon wakes in a town with no memory he pieces his memory to uncover why he is accused of murder oh interesting i, I wonder if this is the, the musical one that was 
<laughs> I mean, I, I haven't seen it yet, and it just, you know, I just haven't had a chance, but um, I've seen some of the pics. And any, anyways, it does look very, like, trippy and, like, little, definitely going to be something I don't think we've ever seen before. Mm. All right. Well, then, so until next time, I'm Kyle. And I'm Brian. And this is The Walking Dead Talk Through. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.